in a world filled with missiles and drones. There's one thing that gives nations a sense of safety. Air defense, advanced systems, powerful radars, and precision-guided interceptors, all designed to stop a disaster before it happens. On paper, everything looks under control. But in reality, the breaches never stop. Despite billions of dollars, decades of development, and cutting-edge technology, modern air defense systems are being defeated. Every single day, cheap drones slip through. Missiles get past early warning systems and hypersonic missiles. There's still no solution. So, is this the end of air defense as we know it? Or are there new projects that could save the shield before it collapses entirely? Let's start from the beginning. How did the old giants fall? At the heart of US air defense, two systems dominate. That designed to intercept ballistic missiles in the upper atmosphere. Patriot, deployed in over 18 countries to stop aircraft and mid-range missiles. Technologically, these are some of the most advanced systems on Earth, with high-resolution radars and ongoing upgrades. But there's a fatal flaw. They weren't built to handle drone swarms, and they can't intercept hypersonic missiles. Worse, they rely on massive, expensive interceptors. A single Patriot missile can cost up to $3 million to take down a drone that costs a few hundred dollars. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support helps us grow. Our last video reached over 1,000 new subscribers. Help us beat that record. Let's back. The US isn't alone in facing trouble. Russia also introduced what it called a revolutionary system, the S-400, marketed as a universal shield against aircraft, missiles, and stealth targets. It boasts a range of 400 kilometers and can track dozens of targets at once. But modern warfare is different. Cheap drones, sudden swarm attacks, and hypersonic weapons expose the system's weakness. In Ukraine, some S-400 platforms were destroyed before they could fire a single interceptor. In the Middle East, Israel's Iron Dome became a global symbol of smart defense. Built with U.S. funding, it was designed to intercept short-range rockets from Gaza or southern Lebanon. The system uses radars to detect whether a projectile poses real danger. If not, it saves its missile. If yes, it fires. Smart, efficient, affordable, but limited. It can't intercept long-range ballistic missiles, and it struggles with mass drone or combined missile drone attacks. In April 2024, when Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones at Israel. Even with Iron Dome, Thad, and Patriot active, some missiles still broke through. If traditional ballistic missiles can do that, what happens when hypersonics are involved? All of this seems manageable. Until we face a new kind of enemy. Hypersonic missiles, fast, maneuverable, and nearly impossible to predict. They fly at speeds over Mach 5, more than 6,000 kilometers per hour and can change direction mid-flight. That makes them almost untraceable and uninterceptable. Why are they unstoppable? Too fast, sometimes less than 60 seconds to react. Unpredictable flight paths confuse radars. The plasma created by high-speed flight hides them from sensors. No current system in the world can intercept them in flight. Even the United States admits, we don't have a solution yet. Who has hypersonic missiles? To understand the scale of the threat, we need to know who owns it. Russia used the Kinzhal missile in Ukraine. China tested advanced DFCF systems. And now, Turkey has entered the race. Its new missile, Tafin Block 4, is a short-range hypersonic ballistic missile, capable of speeds over Mach 5 with a range of up to 800 kilometers. But Turkey isn't alone. North Korea and Iran claim to have hypersonics, but no combat evidence. United States still in development and testing. Why did the US fall behind? It wasn't a lack of technology. It was a different military doctrine. For decades, the US didn't focus on long range missiles like Russia or China because it relied on something else. Full spectrum air superiority, massive air force funding, hundreds of global bases, 
advanced stealth aircraft like the F-22 and F-35, the American mindset was simple. Why develop long-range missiles? when we can fly a stealth jet undetected and destroy the launch site before the missile fires. Meanwhile, Russia and China, without the same global reach, invested in hypersonic missiles as their strategic equalizer. Now comes the real question. If cheap drones defeat billion-dollar systems, if traditional missiles still get through, if hypersonics can't be intercepted at all, is air defense obsolete? The answer? not yet. But it's in serious danger unless it evolves. The threat isn't just one missile. It's a battlefield full of unexpected, fast, and coordinated attacks. And that's why the world is shifting toward a new equation, one built on light, energy, and artificial intelligence. And if you're still here, you're exactly the kind of viewer we appreciate. Hit like and subscribe. Let's explore what comes next the new generation of defense because traditional systems are no longer enough. Nations are racing to build a new kind of shield faster, smarter, and more efficient. And the first of these new technologies isn't a missile at all, it's a wave, and its name. High power microwave instead of exploding the threat. This weapon disables it. It sends focused electromagnetic waves that fry circuits in drones or incoming missiles. One pulse can disable an entire swarm, instantly. U.S. already testing in military facilities. China, building mobile microwave systems for air-base protection. But when precision is needed, when one threat must be taken out instantly and cleanly, another technology steps in. This is the laser defense system an energy beam that burns through incoming targets at the speed of light. And unlike missiles, it doesn't need to reload. No ammo, no smoke, just precision. Today, three countries are leading the race. Helios already deployed on US Navy ships and tested against drones and small threats at sea. Dragonfire United Kingdom in its final testing phase, showing strong accuracy and power. Iron Beam Israel still under field testing. Early versions were used in real scenarios, but the full system isn't yet officially in service. Why lasers matter? No ammunition needed, near zero cost per shot instant, silent engagement, what holds it back? One key limitation, weather. Fog, rain or dust can scatter the beam, turning a cutting edge weapon into a limited tool but even the best weapons need a mind to guide them. In modern warfare, speed isn't a luxury, it's survival. Imagine dozens of drones, cruise missiles, and jammers attacking at once. No human can track, prioritize, and strike them all in real time. That's where AI steps in, not as a tool, but as the commander behind the trigger. It sees, it classifies, it decides, it fires all in milliseconds. This isn't sci-fi, it's already happening. The US and China are now in a silent war, a race not to build the biggest bomb, but the smartest code. Because in the next war, the side with the better algorithm may win before the first shot is fire. So far, we've seen lasers, microwaves, and AI systems, each of them powerful. But none of them have fully solved the hardest challenge yet, Hypersonic missiles. They travel faster than Mach 5. They maneuver mid-air. And worst of all, they can't be stopped. At least, not yet. But the race is on. And two bold projects are trying to make the impossible possible. Glide Phase Interceptor, or GPI. Instead of hitting the missile during launch or descent, the GPI targets it during its glide phase. The brief moment when hypersonic weapons slow down slightly and travel inside the upper atmosphere. That's their only real moment of vulnerability. The US is developing this interceptor to hit that tiny window. And if it works, it could become the world's first true defense against hypersonic missiles. First tests expected between 2026 and 2028. And now, Move to the second project's space-based interceptor systems when Earth-based defenses fall short. Some eyes turn upward. The idea, 
use satellites to constantly monitor for launches, then strike threats from orbit before they reach the sky. It sounds like science fiction, but parts of it are already being tested in classified programs. Is it legal? Technically, the Outer Space Treaty bans weapons of mass destruction in orbit, but it leaves a gray zone for defensive systems, especially if they don't carry nukes. For now, the concept is under research, not yet deployed, but if it works, the next war might not be fought on land, sea, or even air. It might start in space. So what have we seen? From Cold War radars to AI-driven lasers, from iron domes to microwave pulses, air defense has changed more in the last 10 years than it did in the 50 before. Because war itself is changing, drones no longer cost millions. Hypersonic missiles don't give warnings. And the battlefield isn't just land, sea, or air. Now, it's also digital and orbital. In this new world, speed isn't enough. What matters is being smarter and faster than your enemy. And the nations that build the next generation of defense won't just protect their skies. They'll shape the rules of the world to come. If you've made it this far, you're the kind of viewer we truly value. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support keeps us going. But let's end with a question. Will air defense ever catch up to modern threats? Or will it always be easier to attack than to defend? Thank you for watching.